Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show y'all how I make these Mokumugane polymer clay cabochons and for this I'm using a cane that's probably like at least three years old. There should be a link popping up to the video showing where and how I made the Smoke and Magane cane, but um, the aging effect that it had really gave it a pretty cool, like, crackly effect. So let's get started. <laughs> so here you can get a better idea of that crackling that I was talking about. Um, that was from, I, I heated, reheated the cane and everything, like uh, with my body heat, and tried to get it to smooth out evenly on the conditioned clay, but it just wasn't having it. And so, um, if you're using a fresh cane, you shouldn't have nearly as much of that problem. But this one, like I had said, I made about th at least three years ago. Um, and it's just been sitting in a drawer, hanging out. Um... Here I have rolled out on my thickest setting on my pasta machine some black clay that has like a scrap left over in it um, mixed in as well um, just to help it um, stretch it a little bit further. So I'm going to use a tissue blade just like this one. This is a very thin um, blade intended for use with polymer clay. Um, and there will be links to all the uh, tools and materials down in the video description below. And I do want to apologize for um, uh, if I'm coughing and sniffling a lot. Uh, you can probably hear it in my voice. I'm kind of sick. Uh, but I guess still, I'm bringing the tutorials because crafting keeps on happening. So I've just sliced as evenly as I can through a layer. And you could do large amounts of this all at once or you could do like how I'm doing and just do one little sheet oh and of course I'm doing it right off camera and so I've layered it onto our thicker <clears throat> polymer clay and I'm actually just going to trim off this excess from each side and then I'm going to get us transitioned over to our pasta machine um and we're going to start rolling this through. So here we have our little tile of the Mocha Magane layered onto the black scrap clay. And I have my pasta machine clamped down to a work surface. And I'm just feeding it through on its thickest setting. And you can see we got a little bit of spread and a little bit of splitting. But I'm going to come through with the remainder of the scrap clay. And I'm going to keep adding a couple of layers of little tiles to the back. <clears throat> Excuse me. I apologize for the construction noises in the background as well. Our neighbor is getting their house re-roofed. And so I just have a little tile of the black and I'm going to lay it on there. Now we fed it through this way first. I'm going to feed it through long ways. Poor Z dog. He's getting better for those of y'all who've been keeping tabs on us. Um, but he still likes kicking himself. And so you can see it's getting a little longer here, so I have a slightly longer tile that I'm going to layer onto the back. <clears throat> and you could feed it through the same direction every time, but I find that gives you spread just in one direction. Whereas if you alternate it, I feel like it gives you a much more even spread. And this is not crackling nearly as much as what, I, what the, uh, the other pieces were doing. <clears throat> and so now I can actually lay this onto my tile or my scrap clay. This uses up quite a bit of a clay actually, but you get, you'll see how many cabochons we're able to get out of <clears throat> one piece like this. Just cutting off the excess, just like that. And I'm going to feed it through, I think this way. can see that's really starting to give us some nice spreads, some nice shapes. <clears throat> and I'm going to put just this little piece on the back and I'm going to feed it through this way. Not this way, but this way. <laughs> oh, 
There we are. So there we have some really nice spreading and banding and things. It also shows off those shimmers really well. And I think that's just the way I'm going to leave it. Now also, we can bring it down to the number two. <clears throat> I'm going to trim off some of this excess. Just to make it go through the machine just a little cleaner. And save all of these little scrap pieces um, because you'll be able to use those for building up another thick sheet. And so I've reduced it from uh, the thickest setting, number one, to number two. And just feeding it on through. And now I'm going to reduce it down to three and feed it through again. And so there you can see it gave us even more spread. <clears throat> and you could have not reduced it as much and had more vibrant colors, but I really like these subtle tones. So I'm going to get the camera angle changed and we're going to start making caps out of this. So here we have our reduced layer of the Moku Mugane as well as, and this is at a thickness 3 on my Macon's pasta machine, and then I have some black clay mixed up with scrap um, sent through at the layer uh, 1, our thickest setting on the pasta machine. <clears throat> and so I'm going to just lay this on top of the other one, make sure there's no air bubbles trapped between the two layers, and here I have some little um, cutters. You could use whatever shape or size that you like. I really like this one. It's a good medium size. It's not particularly small, but it's not overly large either. So, <clears throat> And now to get the nice shaping on the, uh, the cabochons, I just have a piece of saran wrap, just um, like cling wrap, that I'm going to take and I'm going to lay over the surface of the clay and you can reuse it I usually use it and reuse it until um, it starts cutting through really badly so I think this is going to be like my last use to be able to get out of it and I'm just going to position making sure that uh, <clears throat> I'm catching both layers of clay I'm just going to position it and then press down and this can be kind of hard on your fingers so something that I like to do is I actually have this plastic lid um, that works perfectly for just placing it over the top and then smushing down. Kind of saves your fingers a little bit. <clears throat> and I'm just going to keep placing and pressing. You can be selective um, or you can do like how I do and I just try to capture the whole sheet. Um, you know, fit in as many cabochons as I can. Because that way it'll catch stuff that isn't just my taste. You know, it'll catch things that, um, just the natural beauty of it. But I'm just going to do a few examples on this one. Because my cellophane's just about run out anyhow. You can see how it started tearing holes in it, but you can really see here it gives it a nice rounded edge. Sometimes you can see where the metal overlaps on the cookie cutter. That'll leave a little divot, and you can just pet that out with your finger. But there we are. And so what I'll do is I'll just peel this up. Make sure I pop them out. Now, the whole sheet will look like this whenever it's completed, and that's the clay that I kind of just bunch up and then use as the scrap, like how this black was. So it introduces a little bit of color to the black, but not so much that it's distracting. Like, it still looks quite nice and sleek on the backside. <clears throat> so I'll take these, and the clay that I used in all of it was Primo Sculpey. Um... And so I'll be baking it for about 30 minutes at 270. Um, it's a little lower, but the I, I'd prefer to go with a longer bake at a lower temperature than risk burning the, uh, the cabs. And then whenever they come out, um, I let them cool and then I sand them. But that'll be a different video. So, um, yeah. 
Now also let me show you an example of how it looks if you cut it out with just the cookie cutter with no cellophane. Because for ages that's how I did my uh, my cabochons. Which I mean it's not a bad way of going about it. It gets stuck in the cutter which I feel like slows me down and also risks distortion trying to remove it. There we go. Pet out that line real quick. Um, but you can see <clears throat> on the edges there, maybe, this one has a much sharper edge, whereas this one has a nice kind of gradual roundness to it. And so just do whichever you feel more inclined to do. I mean, it's a very subtle difference, but this one definitely has sharper edges. And then to fix that, you can just take it and um, set it down on your work surface and kind of smush and pet it with your finger. But I feel like it saves a lot of time to just use the cellophane. So there we are. Hey y'all, thanks so much for hanging out with me for this tutorial. I do hope that it was helpful to you. I mean, and this is like a very simple, basic level polymer clay technique um, and project that I use, I mean, not every day, but basically every time I'm doing polymer clay, this is a technique that I hail back to. And you could use any variety of canes or color blends or whatever you like, but I wanted to give you guys just something simple and easy that you can take your creativity and build upon. Um, if you like these cabochons, these are actually going to be included in our, what month is it? Um, December 2017 craft crates, among other projects. And that's, um, I include a lot of my handmade cabochons and different things in there for y'all to play with or wire wrap or set in chain mail or however you like. So if you enjoy my free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, as well as participate in our giveaways and our craft crates and all the different things that we do here at Back to Earth Creations, please check us out on Patreon. We also have um, links down below to the Patreon, but also to our social media, so our Facebook page and our Instagram, uh, where y'all can like tag us and stuff and share pictures of what you make and all sorts of things. So thanks again, y'all, and happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>